Hello again everyone and welcome once again to Stitch Bliss Corner. Mary Rose here. Uh, I'd like to start this, well I may as well tell you what I'm going to be doing. Um, I have a big thank you. I also have some more thank yous and also I have a finish and I'll just show you the progression on my whips. Now the first thing I'd like to say is a sincere thank you to Cindy of Cindy's Cross Stitch. Uh, she sent me a lovely gift and I have it here. I'm going to sh share it all with you and well I'll do it now actually. Now I'm showing you this. Now it came a lot nicer than this. I just tied it up again so that you could see me opening it again <laughs> because she did it beautifully um, and I've done it quite ham-fistedly but anyway so I'll open it up isn't that the most beautiful thing And then she's the lovely backing on it. And it can be hung. I'm going to put that in a very special place where I see it every day. It's got a little heart on it. Look there. Beautiful. And Cindy said something very interesting on her video. She said that only stitchers know how much work goes into something that you've stitched. And she's quite right, you know. I mean, I remember a friend told me once how she stitched something for a member of her family. And she'd worked for a long time on it. And it was a surprise. And the person that received it probably didn't realise how much had gone into that gift. And uh, that person was quite flippant about the whole thing. <laughs> and um, at the time, my friend was quite devastated. Uh, but then we talked about it and she realised that the person that received it had no idea how much time and effort had gone into that piece. Maybe later on they found out when people admired it and said how much had been done, you know, it put into this particular piece. Um, so I think that's true. And whenever you've, uh, it's sort of a lesson in a way, that if you're preparing anything for someone and they, they don't know and they're not a stitcher, just be prepared for the reaction that you might get because it might not be what you're expecting. And if it isn't, don't take it personally in any way. <laughs> it's just, as Cindy has said, very wisely. Only stitches now. And uh, it's just beautiful. Thank you very, very much, Cindy. And Cindy also, rather fittingly, <laughs> sent me this card, which is lovely as well sunflowers on and if a sunflower came alive it would look like Cindy that's all I can say she's just lovely so thank you very much what a wonderful friendship the floss tube community can bring about right well I'll move on before I get too emotional here <clears throat> Now you must excuse my throat. Every time I do a floss tube, I get a croaky th um, throat. Whereas some people, it's their nose apparently gets itchy. My nose leaves me completely okay, but my throat, it's got other ideas. <laughs> um, now, what else was I going? Oh, now the last video that I did, I was talking about Portuguese stitchery. And I had some lovely responses to that. Um, some people that actually live in Portugal 
uh, sent me some messages. And Lily, who uh, uh, has Portuguese, uh, you know, Portuguese mother and aunt, and I think she's probably Portuguese as well. Um, she said that her mother uh, does a lot of crocheting. She was the one that asked me to do the video. And also her aunt does the areolish uh, rugs that I was talking about. And if anyone missed the last episode, I'll just show you. That's an example of an areolish rug uh, with the particular stitching, which um, I, I have tried that and it, it's quite addictive once you get started. You don't want to stop. And it made me think, she said, Lily said that her aunt and her mother, her mother doing the crocheting and her aunt doing the rugs, they use those items every day. You know, they don't put them behind glass and admire them. And I thought, well, you know, that's, an, that's interesting because uh, I think when we make something, sometimes we do tend to want to do that, you know, put it behind glass and not really use it. But that's not what happens in her household. And then I thought about my household and I thought, well, I have done a couple of crocheting uh, items myself that we use. I have it on our bed. So I thought I'll just show you this one. And that's just some of my crocheting. And every winter that's pressed into service. <laughs> and also this other one. It's too big to fold out, but it covers a, a double bed anyway. And if you can see my stripes, when I came across at the end of the wool, I just went on to the next wool and I didn't worry about it being a full stripe across. And I've done that for the entire piece. I've taken it off the bed. <laughs> and brought it down. So, Lily, I have, you know, I also do what your aunt and mother do. So that's very good. Now, the other thing I was going to say was Paula has sent me an interpretation of the kerchiefs that I showed. There, there was a kerchief there that I said I wished I knew what it said and uh, just for people who didn't see the Portuguese piece um, the young women used to stitch kerchiefs for their intended for them to wear and if they wore them to, to church or anywhere else um, it was more or less understood then that that particular man had accepted the kerchief and they were intended for each other for marriage in the future and um, anyway so she this was the one that I held up and it was an interesting point too. someone was saying how they used to be cross stitched but then cross stitch takes so much time that free stitching uh, was it was replaced with the free stitching so that the girls had uh, you know could get their kerchief stitched and not sent to the intended uh, before one of them changed their minds probably <laughs> anyway this one and there's the writing it says the meaning is without you what will I be you want to betray me or change me for another you will be sorry so there's a bit of a gentle hand in a steel fist with that one isn't there but uh, I'm sure it all turned out very nicely in the end. I mean, he wanted to be valued, I, sh I should imagine. Now then, what else have I got on my list to tell you? Oh, no, I mentioned the anti-macassars or anti-macassars that were embroidered and on a piece of fabric. 
and put on the back of the expensive seats you know in those days a lot of the seats were uh, you know covered with rich brocade or even just ordinary cloth in the home in the ordinary homes they wouldn't want oil from the men's hair getting onto the backs of fabric seats so they made these um, anti-macassas so I've just been distracted there was something on the top of my screen there um, anyway so uh, straight away Judy put a comment back saying that um, it's still a, it comes from the Ylang Ylang tree <laughs> Y-L-A-N-G and she said it's still available at the handy gent in the UK um, and I've just put a note here that it was used in Victorian and Edwardian times and obviously still in some places as hair conditioner and grooming um, a tool for that popularized by Alexander Rowland uh, 1747 to 1823 well he left his mark literally didn't he on history then I also wanted to mention Ali from Ali Stitching Studio, uh, who had a tale of woe about uh, some beautiful stitching she did. She was stitching a vase of flowers, and it was for herself because you know she really liked it. And she had the top marked of her work, and she put it in a cue snap, and unfortunately that hid the fact that she'd marked the top. And somehow or other it got turned round and she found that her design wouldn't fit on the fabric because it was horizontal rather than vertical. And I thought, well, you know, she blamed it. She, she laughingly blamed the Q-snap. She was blaming herself, which she shouldn't have done. Because really, once you put it in that Q-snap, the Q-snap should have a top and a bottom on it. Or, you know, one of them should be a different colour or something like that to tell you at all times which is the top so <laughs> anyway so um you know we've all been there Ali and we've all sort of tried to work out ways of avoiding that so I'm I'm sorry that that did happen to you <laughs> um I'm sure you'll well you know you put it away for a while and have a think about it but I did I did send her a message saying that uh, if she was doing it for someone else she probably would have just unpicked it and started again but because it's for yourself I think you tend to put yourself last with things don't you and uh, you know if she really liked it uh, my my opinion is she should get stuck back in and and sew it for herself right and the other thing I had to say was the lovely Jonna uh, stitching scientist she's had her baby baby Louie, the youngest member of the cross stitch community. Isn't he a little doll? And he's got a little smile on his face. The image of his mum. And uh, I just thought that I'd share that with you because, um, you know, she's lovely and he's lovely. And congratulations to her husband. And I'm sure the family is very happy about having their new addition. Um, now what else have I got here? Oh, Michelle Bendy Stitchy and McKenna of Every Stitch Counts. They went to an outing to the, um, well, Paradise was in the title of the shop they went to. Anyway. They looked like they had a great time there. And um, um, Michelle, in her, one of her recent videos, showed an enchanting picture um, her daughter I think somehow or other Vonna is caught up in this she sent a doll I think it was to Michelle's daughter Rose <clears throat> excuse me and uh, Rose has received that doll so well that she loves to have the doll with her pretty much at all times and they went on a holiday and they took their shoes off and left them at the door of the motel room and there's Michelle's shoes, her husband's shoes, 
Rose's shoes and a doll's shoes, <laughs> tiny little shoes. And I thought that is so sweet. I mean, how enchanting. She sounds like a very, <clears throat> excuse me, engaging child. <laughs> um, right, now have I got all my little bits and bobs down here that I was going to say to you? Right. One set of notes isn't enough. I've got, you know, endless notes here. Now I think that's that's all for that one. Now I was going to also say before I move on and show you my fully finished that was the Hokusai piece that I was talking about that went to the framers. Um, I just wanted to mention to Stitching by Lantern Light I got your message and thank you very much for it. I did send a message back but I don't know if you got it or not. Um, and also Gloria Hannaway, um, I did send you a reply, um, but again, I don't know, maybe my message system doesn't work. <laughs> but anyway, um, I hope that uh, this is, in, you know, just to let you know that I did receive that, but I, I'm, I don't really know what to do about it if I reply and you don't receive my replies. It's a bit naff really, isn't it? Um, so I just thought I'd, I'd let you know that I have replied. Okay. So, let's move on now. If I have little breaks in this video, it's because I've waffled on too long or I've done something or other. So, you know, there often are a few jumps in my videos. So I just thought I'd do you a quick update on the piece that I'm doing for the poem by Robert Frost, Stopping on Woods, Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening. Uh, this is the one I chose, uh, Winter Morning, and it's by uh, Joseph Barquison. So I haven't done a great deal on that because I seem to be absolutely obsessed with the scout. I feel as though half of my viewers are stitching that along with me. <laughs> so, and I really should, I'm taking my own advice and going where my inspiration takes me. And it just so happens that my inspiration is scout. It's just a joy to stitch on, uh, it is full of confetti and I just enjoy every bit of it for some unknown reason, <laughs> known only to who knows who. And uh, so that's taken up the majority of my stitching time. You know, when I'm not stitching on him, I'm thinking about getting back to stitching on him and when I can get back to stitching on him. Uh, you know, if that's not obsession, I don't know what is. However, I have had a little bit of time to do some of this piece and that's as far as I've got which is just the center of the piece and working down towards the bottom there so it is coming along I've done that big section there that's just to tell me that's the middle panel uh, just I think um, <laughs> Ali got me a bit freaked out <laughs> so I thought well I'll do that I know exactly where I am, uh, even though I know anyway, but you know what I mean. When you get something like that happen, it, it's not good at all. And here is Scout, which you've seen a lot. And here's where I'm up to. Now, last time you saw him, I was about there. Oh, sorry. Which way am I holding this? Yeah, I got I got across to about there. And now I've moved right across. And I'm starting to get... That's 1907 there. And that is this... If you look just here, that's the signature coming in down here. Russell's signature. And I must say, I was quite 
excited when I saw that. I thought, oh, look at that. So, yes. And he's, he's almost getting too big for the, you know, the board I used to show him. And he's still got to come right out here before he goes up that way. And then, of course, this side, he's got to come way out here as well. So, that's as big as I'm ever going to go with stitching. Because it's just as well I really, really, really enjoy doing him. Because uh, if you didn't, no, well, it doesn't bear thinking about. <laughs> okay, so I'll just go on now to the Hokusai piece and I'll just, I've, I found a bit more about him. I have done a bit about him before in a previous video and this is the book Famous Artists of the Past by Alice Elizabeth Chase, A Young People's Guide to Great Masters. There should be more books like that as far as I'm concerned. Now just a few things. This here is a self-portrait that he's, he did and it just says one of the most popular painters of daily life was Hokusai born in Edo now Tokyo in 1760. Then he was very popular for showing scenes from life, from everyday life. And although many of Hokusai's paintings survive, his work is best known to us through woodcuts made from his designs. And here are some of his works of everyday life. I'll just try and show you. I'm not very good at showing pictures, so my husband said I don't hold them long enough for people to see. I'll just show you that. I love those umbrellas there, aren't they gorgeous? Those their parasols. And also there's another, some more of his work here. And I'll just do a little quote from him. Look at that, gorgeous. The way he's and his line. Look at that crane there. Beautiful. And the great wave of Kanagawa, which is the one that I've stitched, so I'll show you that in a minute. Um, it just said, at 75, Hokusai wrote, from the age of six, I had a mania for drawing. At 73, I learned a little about the real structure of nature. When I am 80, I shall have made still more progress. At 90, I shall penetrate the mystery of things. When I am 110, everything I do will be alive. He signed it with the last of his many names, because apparently he had quite a few names through his life. As he changed his style, he changed his name. <laughs> An old man mad about art. Sorry, he signed it with the last of his many names, an old man mad about art. That was his last name. <laughs> On his deathbed at 89, he said to his daughter, if heaven would only grant me 10 more years, I would have become a great painter. Oh, lovely. All right, and here is the long awaited Piece. Now, my framer is a genius as far as I'm concerned because I did have a bit of puckering up there because it was half stitch and my half stitches are not good. They tend to want to go in every direction other than the way I want them to go in. 
um, but he managed to fix that for me. And of course there's Fuji in the background, the men in the boats, and a great wave coming over. And when I was in high school that used to be on the uh, wall, and I was absolutely fascinated with that picture. And as far as I'm concerned, if it came down to a choice of whether I wanted the print or whether I wanted the stitching of this piece, I think I'd go for the stitching every time. Unless I had the master's piece that he did himself, that would be a different story altogether. So, there's the finished piece. Look at, it's just, he's managed to make it 3D. I don't know how he's done that. Hmm. Yes, yeah, so that was the anchor piece that I've stitched. All right. Well, I shall finish now. I just wanted to make a video to just show you the completed piece to sincerely thank Cindy once again. I have two needle minders and both of them, well this is one and the other one is also from Cindy <laughs> and I see them every day. Now my next video I have been asked to do a video on the White Queen which I shall be doing and I'm getting close to having that ready. And also, Eleanor of Aquitaine. And I was going to do her alongside the White Queen and Margaret of Beaufort, but who was also a queen. But it doesn't fit anyway, historically. And also, it wouldn't be right, I don't think, to put Eleanor with the other two queens. So I'm going to do her separately and a little bit further down the track. Not too far, but I just have to do a few more things to have Eleanor ready. But the White Queen and Margaret Beaufort, uh, they're not very far away at all. I just have to get my head around a few more things. Um, so, in the meantime, happy stitching to everybody. Just... Uh, you know, stitch for people, but stitch for yourself as well. That's very important. Because at the end of the day, as Cindy said, uh, your stitches mean a lot to you and to other stitches. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Goodbye until next time. Bye for now.